I will focus on, on climate change and the role of the ECB, as in previous occasions. Um, uh, recently, uh, the president of the Dutch uh, Central Bank stated the following, uh, I, um, I'm quoting now, climate change can carry serious risk to financial and price stability. For that reason, in the medium and the long term, a stable climate can be seen as an important precondition for central banks to be able to deliver on their mandate. My first question, President Lagarde, is whether you uh, agree that climate change could be considered a precondition for price stability and therefore that it could be included in the primary mandate of the ECB. I would like to know your opinion about that. And, and the second question related to climate change as well is on the Eurosystem collateral framework. Uh, there's a very interesting report by Professor Gabor about that who actually shows that 59 percent uh, of the corporate bonds that the ECB accepts as collateral are, co are, co are coming from carbon intensive sectors. And also, uh, when applying the haircut, the average haircut in uh, non carbon intensive sectors is actually higher than, than the one applied uh, to carbon in uh, intensive ones. So the report basically calls for an, an exclusion of the fossil fuel bonds from the framework, and secondly, to apply a carbon-aligned uh, uh, haircut. My second question would be whether you agree on that and whether you think in the mon monetary policy uh, review that you will be conducting, whether the collateral framework will also be addressed in that sense. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Urtason, for your, for your two questions. Uh, let me uh, be very clear about the first one, uh, which uh, is the issue of whether or not uh, climate change at large, and I'll, I'll come to that in a bit more detail, uh, is to be considered as part of our primary objective. And the answer is yes. And I'll, I'll try to explain to you why uh, we believe that uh, it, is, it is so. We have not, by the way, a complete and final determination on that particular uh, aspect of um, the impact of climate change and the level at which it needs to be considered. This is a matter that is under discussion at the Governing Council. So I'm here stating uh, views that are shared with staff and assert are my view on, on the matter as well as that of uh, many members of the, uh, of the Governing Council and the Executive. It is relevant for our primary objective because it could affect the intensity, the volatility and nature of macroeconomic shocks over the policy horizon. This could make it more difficult to assess the ECB monetary policy stance and how to best adjust it. Second, uh, it could instill potential persistent trends in inflation and affect the interaction between monetary and fiscal policy give you an example, which actually has affected uh, not coming out of Germany in the first few months of this year, is the impact of carbon pricing policies and how it raises uh, prices of um, fossil fuel um, energies, for instance. Third, uh, it could certainly impact the natural rate of interest and as a result, conventional policy space that we have available in order to implement and deci decide and implement monetary policy decisions. It could change the way how monetary policy is transmitted to the macroeconomy, especially with the potential impact on financial markets. And finally, it could impact on the ECB's balance sheet, via exposures to climate-related financial risks and possible stranded assets. Now, this is going to be, in my view, more and more confirmed over the course of time as measures taken by the Commission in terms of disclosure, measures decided by your Parliament and which will be complemented by ongoing um, measures that are discussed at Commission level, will actually take hold and will become uh, effective and will help us uh, make sure that these various uh, items are actually channeled properly into our monetary policy decisions, both from a price stability point of view, primary objective, from a secondary uh, objective point of view as well, and from a pure risk management when it comes to the supervision aspects of the work that is done by the ECB. On your second point, uh, we have indeed received uh, uh, in great pomp uh, the, the report that you're referring to. Uh, our team is currently looking at it very carefully to assess uh, its, its uh, accuracy, the depth of it, and the granularity of its 
uh, analysis, and I don't doubt it, I just need time to actually go into it. But be that as it may, it is a case that as part of the strategy review, we will look at not only the uh, non-monetary portfolio management, but also the monetary portfolio management from risk perspective, and that would apply to the purchases of corporate bonds, which is only about a, a small portion of our total asset purchases, by the way. And that will apply also to uh, collaterals and what kind of haircuts and how we value. But clearly there is, and I want to emphasize that, there is a strong linkages between the work that is done in terms of information disclosure assessment ratings, on the one hand, where you have the hand, where governments have the hand, and the consequences of that in terms of duration and ratings. Thank you.